18, we're asked a few different things about uh, a polynomial of degree 3. So let's start out with our polynomial. We have f of x is equal to negative x cubed minus 2x squared plus 4x plus 8. If you need to think about which of the following are correct. So let's take a look at p. We have the graph of f rises to the left and falls to the right. Well, we have an odd degree polynomial, so that should tell you immediately that, remember that your standard x cubed shape looks like that. Rises on the right and falls on the left. But we have a negative in front, so it's going to switch it to be that way with the arrows there. Rises to the left and falls to the right is exactly true for a negative degree 3 or odd polynomial. So we have P is correct. Alright, for Q, there are three distinct x-intercepts on the graph. Well, the only way we could really figure that out is by factoring it, so that's what we need to do. So this is one, when you have cubics like this, you want to try to factor them by grouping. In the first two terms, we can factor out a negative x squared, and we'd be left with x plus 2. And in the second two terms, we could factor out a 4, and then we could also put x plus 2. So now we can factor out x plus 2, and we have 4 minus x squared left over when we do that. So 4 minus x squared is the difference of 2 squares. That factors into 2 minus x, 2 plus x, and 2 plus x and x plus 2 are the same thing. So we have x plus 2 squared times 2 minus x. So you can see here that we don't have three distinct x-intercepts because we have one that's a double root. Our x-intercepts, where the you know our zeros of the function, are negative 2 and 2, and those are the only two we have. So that tells us that statement Q is not true. And finally, statement R. Statement R says that it's above the x-axis on negative 2 to 2 only. So now let's do our number line. We know that our zeros are negative 2 and 2. So those are the only things we need to put on the number line. So let's just do our sign chart to see if it's positive or negative. So if we have a number bigger than 2, let's say 3, this is going to be positive because it's squared. That would be negative. So here we have negative. Since our number 2 is coming from something that has uh, an odd multiplicity, we know that the sign has to change. So that should be positive. And since our negative 2 came from a factor that has an even multiplicity, we know that sign should stay the same. So we get that it's above the axis on negative infinity to negative 2 and negative 2 to 2. So statement R says that it's above the x-axis on negative 2 to 2 only. So that is false. So we have that only statement P is true for this problem.